Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today we're going to make a barbecue glazed ham. Y'all stay tuned. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take an already smoked and cured ham right from the uh, grocery store there. Uh, this case, we just got a shank end. Um, it was very, very inexpensive, only about nine bucks. I was looking through some of those hams they had there. Some of them were like 75, 80 bucks. I'm like, you kidding me, right? So we're going to take that cheap ham, jazz it up and make it just as good as that really expensive ham. All right, so we got our ham out. We set it on in an old broiling pan. And the first thing we're going to do with our ham is we're going to go ahead and paint this thing with regular old yellow mustard. And the reason we're going to do that is to give something for our seasoning to stick to. I said this thing's already been smoked, you know, factory smoked, I call it. Um, you know, uh, in a factory with, you know, thousands of other, other hams. So the outside's a bit dry. Now what we did do before I started here, which I didn't show you, is I crisscrossed cut just through that outside skin of it with a very sharp knife. And hopefully that'll open up a little bit. So we want to get that mustard on most of it. All right. Now it'll accept and hold whatever seasons we put on it. All right, so what we're using for seasoning today, this is just uh, some salt, pepper, garlic, uh, half and half, uh, equal parts salt, salt, pepper, and garlic, and then equal parts of the Seminole Swamp seasoning, our favorite seasoning. You don't want to use anything at this time with any kind of sugar in it. So definitely I would stay away from your, most of your barbecue rubs. And we're just going to give that a, a generous sprinkle of that mixture all over the surfaces that we got the mustard on. If you put anything with a lot of sugar on that now, uh, through this cook time, that's just going to burn up and the outside of your ham is going to be black, which will probably still taste great, but not the best uh, presentation that we're looking for. going to be pretty black but we don't want it to be like a piece of charcoal. Uh, Some reason kind of hard to get to some of these places. Okay so we got it up there. Now to get it ready to go on the smoker you need to gently lift it up and you need to put it up on some kind of rack. So if you got any like a little rack here's the camp made little grill grill stand. I'm going to put it right up on there and then uh, we'll get it ready for smoker. All right, we've got our Weber kettle grill going. That's at about 350 right now. And we have it set up indirect with coals on either side. And we put the it near the these little opening flaps so we can put a little bit of wood chips in there if we want. Have some uh, whiskey barrel uh, wood chips and it. I'm just going to leave it right in the middle just like that. You know, I had a kind of a loose piece here, so I skewered that so it don't fall off. Oh, so we're just going to stick it under there. We're going to position the, uh, the vent in the center. And each time we take the lid off, we want to switch from this side to that side, and it'll keep it uh, going nice and even. So that's going to be its home for about the next hour before we look at it again. All right, so don't forget this part, like I almost just did. I'm gonna go ahead and pour a bottle of uh, apple cider right underneath there. And that's gonna to help to regulate our temperature and it's gonna give us some nice steam right inside the grill. So that's gonna be your home for the next hour before we check it again. You look, if you keep looking, you're not cooking. So I'll tell you what guys, that smells really good already. 
It's only been about 20 minutes, but I notice I'm not getting a lot of smoke. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in some, some wood chips in there. This is some uh, Jack Daniels whiskey barrel chips. I'm gonna just give them a few of those. And we used these coals earlier today for another little project I was working with. So they're gonna probably have to be refreshed a little bit before we get all the way through this cook time. That's gonna give us some nice smoke. And every time you take a lid off, reverse your top vent. pineapple whiskey glaze. What I have in here is a pureed half a can of pineapple with the entire uh, can of juice. We just run that in the little uh, smoothie maker and got that nice and smooth. And these uh, amounts are going to be approximate. I'm going to put in about two tablespoons. That's grandma's molasses. And here we have some, some true uh, Tennessee sorghum molasses. This is my favorite. I'm gonna put in about a quarter cup of that. That has some really good flavor in it. All right, and then to that, we're gonna add about three quarters of a cup of white sugar. Now you could also use brown sugar, but since we have molasses, no real need for that. Start giving it a quick incorporating. Gonna put about two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, a couple of dashes of soy sauce. It's gonna bring in some salt. That's about a tablespoon and a half. Here's our backwoods gourmet rub. This does not have any salt in it. If you want to see how to make that yourself, I'll leave you a link to our video where we give away that recipe. This is our competition recipe. Give it a few shakes of Seminole Swamp, swamp Season in there. And that does have, does have some salt and in it. And about a quarter cup good whiskey. This is a 12 year old Scotch black label from, from over in Scotland. So we're gonna give that all a good blend with the whisk. Then we're going to set it up on the fire over there and simmer it for a little bit. It's going to bring that right over on our propane burner and just kind of keep it moving. We want that sugar to dissolve. And as it does, it's going to thicken. It's getting that time of the day where we get a lot of shadows here. So I'm hoping you guys can see this, but we're gonna go ahead and start bringing this glaze over, brushing it all over our ham. It's been on now for two and a half hours. The internal temperature is about 125 degrees. We're trying to get it to 140. Now remember, this is already a fully cured, fully smoked ham. Now this, you know, if this was a, uh, a fresh ham, you know, that hadn't had that process done to it yet, you'd need to get it to 165. But this uh, basically is pretty much cooked when you get it. So we give it a good, nice, coat everywhere we can see with this beautiful whiskey glaze we get the lid back on I've been also I just refreshed the charcoals too I put uh, five or six new ones on each side 
and uh, this time I went to Stubbs, so it'll last a little longer. We had been using uh, some Kingsford Original. Man, that's starting to look really awesome, isn't it? It's been about 20 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and give it another coat of our whiskey glaze. Internal temperature, 141, 140.9. All right, means that guy's done. We don't want to dry it out. So we're gonna go ahead and take it off and let it rest. Okay, guys, we've let it rest. It's still warm. I tinted it with some aluminum foil. And uh, man, that looks awesome, don't it? So what we're gonna do here now is we know we have a bone that runs kind of at an angle through there. That way I'm gonna take this Michelangelo sh chef knife, which is super freaking sharp. It's so sharp, sometimes it scares me you like to buy this knife I'm gonna leave you a link right down in the description box so I'm just kind of following that bone and flaying that top half of that ham right off of there just like that I'm gonna set the rest of this aside back in aluminum foil and then we're gonna carve this beautiful top piece okay so I'm gonna go ahead and go in here and slice off this nice beautifully barked end piece and you know that end piece right there that's generally the chef's choice that's for that's a treat for the people that were involved with cooking this and today that's going to be me okay so we're just going to go ahead i'm going to quarter you know cut them fairly thin I'll tell you this is a, a very nice uh, bark and crust on that outside of that ham it's almost uh, got a little crunch to it so we're gonna go ahead and slice the rest of this up and then we're gonna put it on a plate Okay, so we still have our nice warm glaze we had sitting over there on the grill. I'm gonna go ahead and just give that a little drizzle right on the plate. Just like that. I come over here, grab this ham. And we're just gonna fan it out right over the plate just like that okay for garnish I want to put a few of the these are the pineapple chunks that were left from making that, uh, that glaze to begin with people can grab up a few of those let's get a little greenery on it Okay, the last thing we're gonna do is just put a little, let's a little sprig of cilantro right over there in the corner. I'm gonna take another tiny bit of the glaze. And I'm just gonna dribble it right across the top just like that. Clean up that plate a little bit, it's kind of splash. And there you go. That's a beautiful glazed barbecued ham backwards gourmet style. I tell you what, that's probably the best piece of ham I ever put in my mouth right there. That glaze really comes through. I could taste the seasoning in there. The ham is really tender. It's, it's tender. Okay. Um, sometimes you get these cheap hams, you know, and they can be kind of tough. But I mean, look at that. 
just breaks apart. Okay. Yeah, that was really good. Hey, we'd appreciate if you hit that like button right down there. And hey, uh, to help support more videos just like this one, please check out the links below down in the description box. And subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications so you don't miss out.